Prima Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly is interviewing Sariti Group Chief Executive Mike Teke and Sariti Green CEO Peter Venn. Hi Mike and hi Peter. It's great to chat to you both once again. Mike, you are a coal bull, yet you are adapting yourself to becoming an energy bull. Why is this best for the people of South Africa in general and the people of Mpumalanga in particular? Number one, I am a coal bull and I believe that that has changed now. We're talking about being an energy bull. The simple reason for us to change from being focused on coal only, we realize that the world is changing and that the world talks about transition. That energy transition is critical for the entire world and for South Africa specifically. Therefore, we cannot have South Africans watching this game or watching this process unfold in front of them. One, we want to be active in ensuring that South Africans benefit out of the change and enjoy the benefits of a mix, an energy mix, where we have coal, we have wind, we have solar, we have nuclear and other forms of energy generation. The second one for the Mpumalanga province, it is imperative that when we traverse this chain, we're going to build two new coal mines and we're building, as you know, PIDA is active in the Morgan Zone, Dava, Bethal area. That is significant for the Mpumalanga people because one, infrastructure growth, two, economic activity, three, development, and number four, that's what we as a business are showing actively that this just energy transition is not going to be business only, but we will be taking along a lot of stakeholders who are part of Mpumalanga as a population. And Peter, coal energy and renewable energy are poles apart, yet Sariti Green is the embodiment of the two becoming one. Why is it so important, particularly in South Africa, that these two energy sources become joined at the hip? As Mike has said, Mpumalanga is the energy heartland of South Africa, and to have a just energy transition where we leave people behind is just not acceptable. I think the concept of an energy transition from coal to renewables is easy, but the just part is what we're focused on. Bringing the stakeholders along with us in Mpumalanga is so important. And then to get the timing right, the country as a whole, we've invested significant amount of capital in transmission infrastructure over decades. And to leave that transmission infrastructure behind if we were to transition, that's crazy. We need to leverage this infrastructure. We need to be building renewables in amongst the coal mines. And if you look at the circular economy, our mine New Denmark is 20 kilometers from the wind farm and we're taking water from the mine and we're repurposing the water as we build out the wind farm. So there's a whole circular economy happening within Mpumalanga and it's important to the people of Mpumalanga. And Mike, how much of the coal that Sariti mines each year is consumed in South Africa and how much is exported? Uh, South Africa... Uh, for ESCOM, all the power stations we supplied 65% of our production and 35% it's exported. And Peter, to what extent will Sariti Green be able to lower the carbon footprint of Mpumalanga with the introduction of wind energy? And when and where will Sariti Green begin generating solar power? Yeah, thanks, Martin. So one, from a Sariti Group perspective, we will almost obliterate scope to emissions in the production of electricity in that Sariti will be purchasing green electricity from the wind farm. So there is a huge reduction, but I think we need to look at it as a network across the country. Every megawatt hour that's produced abates a ton of carbon in South Africa, and this project when complete will be 3,000 gigawatt hours. So that's a significant abatement of carbon within the South African context. From a Sariti perspective, our focus on solar is twofold. We'll be undertaking solar generation within our wind farm, and we'll be undertaking solar generation on our rehabilitated land within our mining areas. So it's important for us to be cognizant that the right statistical number is two thirds wind and one third solar if you want the least standard deviation. And the country's fast on track for 90% solar and 10% wind. So as you know better than most, an energy mix is what we need. So we're going to really try and stick mostly to our knitting at Sariti Green, which is wind energy. 
And Mike, what regulatory and policy steps need to be taken in South Africa to enable all citizens of this country to get the best out of the essential energy transition? Martin, this question is very important, especially after the elections, the legislative and the regulatory framework that we have. The first step for me is people understanding that now we have the Department of Minerals and Petroleum Resources, and then we've got the Department of Electricity and Energy. Those two departments must align in ensuring the future of this country and when it comes to energy generation. And the just energy transition, therefore, will be defined within the rules of those two departments. The second step for me is what ESCOM has done with splitting the business into three. We've got generation, we've got distribution and transmission. And we know very well that the National Transmission Company of South Africa is now existing. And we need to understand what is its role into the future. Thirdly, whilst you have those, you have the Presidential Climate Commission as well, doing its own thing on the side. When I say its own thing, they are consulting with communities, they are talking to stakeholders. How are we going to ensure that there's alignment for the population of South Africa to understand what the role of each one of these components is? And Peter, Sariti Green's 155 megawatt, 4.8 billion rand first phase project is already underway. Given the time it took to get that going, are you still confident that Sariti Green can deliver 900 megawatts in the next three years? Martin, uh, that is absolutely our business as usual target as we move forward. Developing renewables in South Africa is a complex task, numerous stakeholders. But I think the better way to look at the first phase is it's actually two projects. We're building a gigawatt's worth of grid infrastructure and 155 megawatts wind farm. So the further megawatts of that 900 then will connect to that grid infrastructure that we are doing. So to date, the vast majority of the work has been going on the grid infrastructure to make sure that we can evacuate the gigawatt hours into the ESCOM network and wheel it across to our clients. So very confident that we'll be able to move forward. And should the policy framework allow, we could comfortably do more than that. And Mike, all this costs money. How is Sariti funding the energy transition? And is enough incentive being given to independent power producers to do what the world so desperately needs, to energy transition? Well, right at the moment, the best thing that ever happened to us when we acquired WinLab and created Seriti Green. Obviously, Seriti became a majority shareholder with 55% of the business and uh, Standard Bank and RMB, instead of just not only being funders, but they are shareholders and they've taken equity in the business, 14.5% shareholding each. And then we have Peter, who's the shareholder as well in the business. It is critical to understand that that partnership plays an important role for us being able to raise money from these institutions. And Peter, you spoke the other day of local authorities needing to bill power consumers for the use of wiring infrastructure that local authorities provide. Why should this happen? Martin, nothing for free in this life. I mean, I think I've learned that the hard way. But, you know, jokes aside, I think it's very important that our distribution infrastructure is looked after. We obviously need municipal reform. We cannot continue to have municipalities just making profit without adding benefit to the electricity network. But personally, I, I believe we need to see a much smarter distribution grid, which obviously will cost money. But in the end, having a smarter distribution grid focused on the demand and the supply side, bringing in virtual power stations, this is all going to lower the demand for generation across the consumer network. At the moment, us at home don't pay peak tariffs. So there's no disincentive for us not to use electricity in peak times, as I well believe there should be. So municipal reform is critical over the next couple of years for us to get a well-operating grid. And if you go look at Canberra in Australia, the price of electricity is well below the rest of Australia because they're 100% renewable and they have smart distribution infrastructure. And finally, Mike and Peter, what should be the biggest takeaway from this interview in your views? Well, 
Well, you know, Martin, I've copied somebody's story of persuasion fatigue that we're wasting time persuading each other if, is it fossil fuels or is it renewables? We're wasting time. It's fossil fuels and renewables. And the future of any country globally, it's going to be about energy. The quicker you are in adapting and building a strong energy portfolio in your country and have a strong grid, you're going to be the winner. And South Africa must travel that journey. Martin, yeah, to echo Mark, it's renewables and coal. Uh, the money's there, the willingness is there, the in industry's there. Uh, what we need is policy certainty and alignment. And whatever number you wish to throw in front of us as an industry, we're ready to take it on. That was Kuma Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, speaking to Sariti Group Chief Executive Mike Teke and Sariti Green CEO Peter Venn.